an axiom that should be universally recognized from Gideon J. Tucker. No man's life, liberty, or property are safe while the legislature is in session. Let's take a look. As we begin the 2024 session of the 113th General Assembly, that old saw might ring especially true. The picture, which is the background for the thumbnail of this video, and is the backdrop of the meme which leads off this message, is of the oath being taken in the House of Representatives in 2023 at the start of this General Assembly. I took it as I watched and listened from the gallery as each member raised their hand and swore to vote without favor, affection, partiality, or prejudice, and affirming to God Almighty that they would not propose or assent to any bill, vote, or resolution which should appear to them injurious to the people, or consent to any act or thing whatever that should have a tendency to lessen or abridge their rights and privileges, as declared by the Constitution of this state whether by failure to understand the full gravity of that oath or by purpose to deny their obligation, nothing could be further from the intended result of that affirmation than what is the collective action of the legislature. Much of that is due to sloth on the part of the people. It is too easy to sit back and let someone else do the work of watching the legislature and then to complain that it is passing bad bills or failing to honor its oath. But just as Pericles said in the century before Christ was born, just because you do not take an interest in politics does not mean that politics will not take an interest in you. Few honor their obligation to instruct their representatives, per Article 1, Section 23 of our Declaration of Rights. How can your elected employees know your wishes if you fail to do your job? Recently, the Attorney General of Tennessee signed with 25 other states' Attorney Generals in a comment on a recent rule proposed by the ATF, saying that, quote, the proposed rule does not give sufficient treatment to this nation's important historical context, and it does not even mention Heller or Bruin. Given that those two landmark cases provide the standard with which all federal and state firearms regulations must comply, it is peculiar that they receive no mention in this proposed rule. The submission, combined with the stunning overreach of this proposed rule, shows that the Bureau has no respect for the Second Amendment rights of the citizens that it tries to regulate. Close quote. If, in fact, Heller and Bruin are necessary control metrics for an agency of the U.S. government, why are they not for the Tennessee General Assembly? Further from that comment signed on to by our AG, quote, despite the proposed rule regulating conduct that implicates the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, the proposed rule does not at any point reference the term Second Amendment. This omission demonstrates that there was no attempt by the Bureau to comply with the Constitution, close quote. Are we then to understand that since Heller and Bruin are not recognized by the legislature or mentioned in any discussion as necessary for the protection of our rights, that they have no respect for the Second Amendment in Tennessee or that they do not intend to comply with the Constitution? Legislators that quote only part of SCOTUS rulings like the one in Senate Judiciary last year that tried to intimate that long guns were dangerous weapons and should be denied to Tennesseans without reading the remainder of that paragraph, which demands that only those weapons that are dangerous and unusual are not covered by the Second Amendment. That is disingenuous at best, and the failure to state that firearms that are in common use are covered is tyrannical. It is possible that those elected employees do not know the facts and are simply parroting talking points from those who do but want to suppress the God-given right to arms that per SCOTUS pre-existed the founding of this republic. It is our job to educate them then and to hold them accountable. Otherwise, we will continue to suffer from big money donors that want to hold the citizens of this state in thrall. 
it is imperative that we confront our legislators with the Bruin basis. The Supreme Court held in Bruin, quote, when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. To justify its regulation, the government may not simply posit that the regulation promotes an important interest. Rather, the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Only if a firearm regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command, close quote. Under the Bruin standard, if an activity such as carrying in public falls under the Second Amendment's negative mandate, shall not be infringed, then it is presumed legally and constitutionally that the activity is protected from any government infringement, period. The second part of the statement is what we will refer to as the Bruin basis. That is, once it is determined that the conduct is protected by the Second Amendment, then the government bears the burden. That is, it must demonstrate that the statute, law, regulation, or ordinance is consistent with this nation's historical tradition. If the government cannot demonstrate by clear evidence in a court of law that the regulation was a generally accepted law at the time of the founding, then it is unconstitutional now. It is our obligation to let our representatives know that we know the facts and that we demand that they operate on our behalf under this basis. Share this video. Pass it along to your friends and neighbors. Take back the reins of government. And as you learn the constitutional requirements, make sure to tell your elected representatives that they must obey their oath. That every taxpayer paid employee takes to support the constitution of this state and of the United States. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe button. Go to our website, www.tennesseefirearms.com. You will find information there about the legislative session. Subscribe to our free email updates to learn more about your Second Amendment rights in Tennessee.